Welcome to Covenant Keepers Ministries. Today is uh, Monday, July 22nd, 2024. I'd like to start by reading a section of scripture out of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 9, and here's what it says. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom, having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. So this week, I, I really have an intention that I want you, I want to help you, I want to help myself actually in this process to be released in joy by understanding how joy comes into us, how we have joy, how we keep it, and then practicing living in that joy. Now, here's here's one of the difficult things. Some people equate laughter, humor, and fun with joy. <laughs> but none of these things really define joy at all. One may be joyous and laugh and have fun, but the joy we are speaking of goes beneath the surface of laughter and fun and deals with what's in my spirit, not what comes out in my behavior or the expressions on my face. In other words, my outward appearance. People whose personality is bubbly and and outgoing who seem to be naturally optimistic are often associated with joy when they really inside of their person have little or no joy at all. And that doesn't surprise anyone who's listening to this because you know it's true. They may appear that they're just, everything's all together, but inside they're just a mess. The Bible's very clear that a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but the Bible does not equate a merry heart with joy. Joy goes way deeper than a merry heart. Although I would say, if you have joy, you're liable to have a merry heart. But remember what we just read, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptation. So let's get some other scriptures in on this so we, we get a, a, a bigger depth of it. Romans fourteen seventeen, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink or food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So I'd say to you, where's the Holy Spirit? And if you're a believer, you know the Holy Spirit's dwelling in you, takes up residence in your spirit. Isaiah 12, 3 says, therefore with joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. Isaiah 61, 10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. As a bridegroom decks himself with ornaments and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. So my defense of how do, we, how do we understand and how we become released in joy is to know that we receive this joy because the spirit of God dwells in us. Kingdom of God's in us, joy's in us. And remember this text because, oh, well, we might be in heaviness even, but something inside, an inheritance incorruptible is dwelling in us. And when I started this video, I said, I, I, I want you and myself included in this to be released in joy. And so in the next few days, I'll propose what I believe are clear ways to be released in joy. But let me tell you again clearly where this starts. It starts when the Spirit of God comes into me. Romans 14, 17, kingdom of God is not meat and drink, not food and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. In fact, in Psalms, it says, in your presence is fullness of joy. 
At your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. In your presence. It's the abiding presence of the Lord that gives us this joy. So you desire joy? If you want it in your life, the simple answer is to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And as a believer, you've already received a down payment on your salvation. The deposit of the Holy Spirit's been made into your spirit. And the Holy Spirit is joy. He's joy. So something that's undergirding your life, something that's keeping your head above water, so to speak, something that's even in manifold trials, tribulations, and temptations, you have an anchor that gives you this abiding joy. You know God is sovereign and taking care of your life. Let's pray together. Father, man, I, I wanna be filled with the Spirit because if the Spirit of God is joy and the kingdom of God is joy, I want more of the kingdom of God. I want more of the Spirit of God. And I'm praying that over anyone who listens to this video devotional who watches, they're gonna say, wow, give me more of the Holy Spirit. Give me more of God. Give me more of Jesus. Let me be filled. And I'm praying even while we're in manifold temptations, manifold trials, all kinds of hardships, and maybe more to come, something, something's deep inside of us that's saying, wow, I'm secure in my God. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you for this joy. Amen. Well, God's grace and peace over you today. Be blessed. Have a great day.